getting your period back is something that is going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of patience, and it's going to take a lot of mindset shifting. Today I want to talk about all about how to get your period back if you have had hypothalamic amenorrhea. The body has just shut down the reproductive system because there is not enough energy in the body to keep it going. Pretty much we're under feeding, over exercising and too stressed. What you have to do to get it back is start eating enough, stop over exercising and learn how to manage stress. I here and I say it with love but you have to slow down, you have to give your body a break, you have to feed it all the food and you really need to slow down the exercise. Energy available for the reproductive system to start and reboot, it's you're not going to get your period back. Stand, you get crazy mood swings, you get like, you know, energy levels go high and low. Like there are so many like bad things that come with being, having a good menstrual cycle. But what you have to remember that this is normal and being a female, this is the way that we are designed to be. And there is many health complications if we are not getting that regular men menstrual cycle. One of the biggest things that I see as an exercise physiologist is I see ladies coming in postmenopausal and they've got osteoporosis and they're only 55 years old. Okay, so 55 years old, and if they like knock their elbow on like their table, their risk of fracturing it is so high. Osteoporosis is so such like an underrated condition because you literally look healthy, you look like there's nothing wrong with you. However, your bones are so brittle, your bones are so brittle, like if you fall over, you have the chance of fracturing your hip because your bones are just so weak that they will snap. So it's something that really needs to be addressed now in our early teens in order to prevent this sort of stuff from happening. This is basically based off the book, No Period, Now What? If you have not seen this resource, I definitely recommend reading it. It gives you a full detailed um, explanation of what hypothalamic amenorrhea is, how to get your period back in really good detail. So step number one, getting your period back. You need to eat enough food to counterbalance the energy deficit that you have been on for however long that you've been in it for. So what this means is eating at maintenance and above. So you need to be eating in a surplus in order for your body to recatch and regain up what the deficit that you just put it through. Probably experience feelings of shame, feelings of guilt, feelings of just, I don't want to do this. I don't want to eat all this food because I don't want my body to change. However, at the end of the day, you really need to remember why you're doing it. You're not doing it for aesthetics anymore. You're doing it for health. And not having a period is not healthy. So, eat all the food. They recommend in no period now what to be at least, at least eating 2,500 calories. Of course, it's a ballpark figure and it is going to differ for everyone. Me personally, I was actually eating more at like 3,000 calories. I was eating a lot, okay? So don't be afraid of the food. You need to refuel your body, refuel the energy deficit that you've been into in order for your body to recatch it. It's reducing the intensity of your exercise. Exercise is amazing and I love it so much, but the problem that comes with exercise is that it's actually a form of stress on your body. So your body doesn't actually know if you're doing a hit session or if you're running away from a tiger. It is the same physiological response that you get during high intensity exercise. So that means cortisol is released, adrenaline, noradrenaline is, is released, and your body goes into stress mode. Things that we don't want to happen is going into these high stress situations. So focusing on exercise that is gonna make your body relax and feel good. So you wanna be going for slow walks, you wanna be going for slow yoga, you wanna be going for movement that's flowy and not intense, like heart rate up at above like 80%. You want to forget about that for this time of your life. And you have to remember that it's not forever. It is not forever. You can go back to your high intensity exercise. You can go back to the boxing. You can go back to like 
hill sprints and things like that. But at this point in time, if your goal is to get your period back, you decrease the intensity of your exercise because you need to de-stress your body. The third thing is working on your stress levels. So like I just said, exercise is a stress, but then you have to look at every other aspect of your life. So if you're going through a super stressful time at work or if you're going through stressful time at uni or in your family, of your friends, like this is all gonna contribute to that high cortisol release. High cortisol means shutdown of, hyper, of the hypothalamus, which shut down your period. Okay, that it's journaling, meditating, speaking to someone, a psychologist, a, a coach, someone that you can really talk about how you're really feeling and getting help, getting them to talk, get you to talk out your feelings, feel the feels, and then move on from it. So really trying to like get those stress levels under control. And then the last thing that I really love to talk about is changing your mindset about the whole thing. So. If you tell someone who has been restricting themselves and over exercising for the last whatever it is six months and you tell them to eat more and exercise less there's gonna be resistance I get it I was there it's not a fun time why I really recommend working on your self-esteem working on your body image and working on your confidence without this aspect recovery is going to be so much harder the best way to do that is knowing your why, knowing why you're doing it. And always remember when you're eating the cake and you're feeling bad about it, remember why you are doing this. It is for your health, for number one priority. It is for your eventually maybe having a baby. It's, it's for these vital things in our lives that we really need to focus on. So it's not all about aesthetics anymore. It's about being health as a priority. If this video helped you at all, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below how you're going in your journey. I would love to hear about it. Come over to Instagram and say hello. I always love to connect with people. I love food so freaking much and I love talking about it. So if you're a fellow foodie, come say hi because I would love to connect. If this helped in any way, let me know and I will see you all in the next video.